My name is Amy Ross, and I'm the lead for Advanced Spacesuit Pressure Garment Technology Development. And that's awesome. Um, and you're, we're here with one of the Apollo suits, correct? Yes, actually, the two different styles of Apollo suits that we used on the surface of the moon. So can you talk a little bit about what we're actually seeing here? Sure. Yeah, so um, there's two suits, and they're different for a reason, and so I'll talk about that. The first one is the A7L, and then there's the A7LB. Mm -hmm. The A7L was the first suit they started using, mm -hmm. and it did a combination of jobs. So it really did three different jobs. It had to do crew survival. So in case of a cabin depressure station, for example, then mm -hmm. the suit would keep you alive. It did microgravity EVAs when they needed, so the um, cockpit commander could go outside and, and retrieve film and that kind of thing. And then the, of course, the two crew members that went down to the surface of the moon would wear the suit when they did their spacewalk on mm -hmm. the surface of the moon. Great. So you can see there's a lot of umbilicals that come from the portable life support system to the front. It really was a portable life support system. Uh, you, you didn't wear it most of the time when you were in the spacecraft. You had hoses from the vehicle that attached to the life support of the vehicle, and that's how you got your oxygen to breathe and recirculate air. But when you went out to do your spacewalk, then you put your life support system on, like a backpack. There's actually straps on there that just hold that backpack on, and then the umbilicals connected the space, the the spacesuit to the portable life support system. Okay, mm -hmm. um, it had a, a feature on the front where you could give yourself an injection if you had needed anti-nausea medicine. Well, they didn't know how people would react walking in one sixth gravity on the moon, and so they had some of those special features. They didn't continue <laughs> those in later <laughs> versions of the suit, but early versions, they were trying to plan for anything that could happen, so that was a feature. Yeah. Um, you can see there's a red knob there. There's a secondary oxygen pack on the top of that portable life support system. So in case you got into trouble and you got a leak in the suit, for example, and you needed some emergency oxygen to flow, you pulled that red knob. Uh, you can see there's some cover layers on the helmet and down on the boot. Those weren't part of the, this non-lunar surface configuration suit, so you only wore those when you're walking on the surface of the moon, mm -hmm. extra insulation and dust protection. So those were um, specific to the configuration when you did a spacewalk. And you can see the gloves. They had this uh, aluminized metal. I guess it was a, maybe steel, but it was a, a braided steel fabric <laughs> oh, wow. that they used on the gloves because they knew that they would get a lot of wear and um, abrasion as they tried to use their tools. They did a lot of uh, drilling and hand drilling when they were on the surface of the moon, and, and that was hard work. <laughs> so in general, you know, we didn't have really high metabolic rates in the suit, but when they did kick up, a lot of times was doing those kind of really hard uh, geologic drilling kinds of tasks. Mm -hmm. And let's see, one of the things you need to be aware of, because it's going to be important when I talk about the A7LB and the changes they made, is there's that big flap on the crotch of the suit. That's because that's where the zipper of the suit runs. Okay, so they, they use the zipper to get in and out of the suit at the mm -hmm. time. One of the problems with a zipper through your crotch is that if you want to be able to bend, for example, to sit in a lunar rover in Apollo 15, 16, and 17, <laughs> then you needed to not have, when the suit's pressurized and you have that zipper there, this becomes very stiff. Mm -hmm. And so it's really hard to get the hip mobility you need to sit. Mm -hmm. So they had to, when they wanted to sit in a lunar rover, get away from that zipper through the crotch and move to this configuration, the A7LB. Mm -hmm. And so you can see there's no crotch flap and the zipper goes around the body. So it snakes around and it, it, you can see the flap over here where you, the zipper um, starts and stops. Other than that, the suit's fairly f similar. So you can see again, it's got the cover layers on the helmet and the overboots. It's got the portable life support system on the back of the suit and the umbilical is connecting it with the display and control module on the front as well that allows the crew member to tell the PLIS how to work. Um, and those are the Apollo suits that we used on the moon. Great. And can you talk a little bit about how oh. these suits have informed current spacesuit design and are still yeah. it, informing what you're doing for future space flight? So for the U.S. space program, these are the only suits that have been on a planetary surface. Well, for anybody's space program, <laughs> only suits that have been on a space, a planetary surface. And so we refer to it quite a bit because that's our, our one bit of experience that we have. So we've got reports on how the astronauts who wore the suits say they worked for them. We've got reports on how the suits were worn 
or how they got dirty and how much dirt they had on them mm -hmm. from Apollo. And so we use that feedback to try to make sure that we're addressing any of the problems that they saw or had, as well as um, just trying to recognize what kinds of tasks they did and how long it took them and what kind of metabolics rates were used. So that all kind of informs how we set our requirements for the next set of suits. However, because we have the great luxury of getting to design a suit specifically for surface EVAs, whereas again, mm -hmm. these did surface EVAs, crew survival and um, microgravity EVAs, mm -hmm. then we don't, we get to change a lot of the features here that really kind of made it difficult for the astronauts on the Apollo. When you saw them like, you know, do the kind of this kind of hopping, loping motion, some of that's just one six gravity, but mm -hmm. some of that's because they didn't have a lot of hip mobility to do a real walk, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now with our ability to design specifically for planetary surface EVAs and not have to keep hard components out of the suit, so when you landed in the spacecraft uh, in a potentially off nominal landing, you didn't hurt yourself with these metal bits in the suit, right? Mm -hmm. So you can imagine if you had a big, you know, a big metal ring around your waist and you landed hard, that would Ow. not do good things to your spine. Yeah. Uh, and so with our, suits that we will use in the future, we will have a big metal ring around your waist. So when you walk, your waist can you know, rotate like it does when you walk. Um, we can have uh, bearings in the, in the hip area so you can step naturally, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and th now those are key features that allow you to move more naturally throughout the body and not just uh, with the soft goods joints that they had in the Apollo suit. So that's one of the big features that you'll see is different. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for showing us these suits. They're great to see. Okay. I'm glad to show them to you.